Another large storm will be coming to the United States over the next few days, which will bring another multi-day severe weather event to the United States. This will bring more damaging winds, hail, and a few tornadoes to areas like the northern and central plains, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and parts of the Northeast. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about this storm and exactly where we're going to be talking about the potential for severe weather. We are going to begin with what's happening across the United States this morning, which overall, it was a pretty active day yesterday depending on where you were we had a large line of storms roll across michigan yesterday this did end up producing some scattered power outages and some scattered tree damage as well luckily we didn't have anything in the way of tornadoes it wasn't really a tornadic day yesterday which is why we didn't go live in addition to that we actually had a huge supercell yesterday just north of chicago that produced some significant damaging winds just to the north of chicago it was only one storm so it was another situation where we just didn't go live but this is a photo from the niu meteorology camera on campus back over in northern Illinois of that supercell. Pretty impressive stuff, really impressive storm in general that did end up producing some hail and as well as damaging winds. Now, after that, it turned into a basically a mess across the Midwest. This is what we have left remaining early this morning across the Midwest. Just lots of showers and thunderstorms, nothing really severe at this point, just all outflow dominant activity. A lot of that will be weakening throughout the morning and we'll be kind of done with this as we go later into the day today. And then we'll be watching for that next storm back over in Canada that's going to bring severe weather today to the northern plains and then tomorrow that's going to shift into parts of the central plains and back even into parts of the midwest that was a horrible outline but you'll see better in a second what we're talking about the risk of severe weather the east coast for now is dry but we'll be watching for a low threat for severe weather today in the mid-atlantic region which we'll talk about again here in just a second now let's talk more about that severe weather potential for the next few days and we'll begin with today which is wacky weather Wednesday. We do currently have two different slight risks for severe weather. The first of which is back over in the mid-Atlantic in the Ohio Valley where the main concern across the board even in the marginal threat will be damaging winds and hail. There is really not much of a tornado risk here. It should be a very very low threat. If we get a brief spin up I wouldn't be shocked. Just not something that's very notable for today. And then back over in the northern plains like north and South Dakota, we have a slight risk for severe weather there. This will probably be a more interesting risk today for severe weather. I am considering a live stream for this, but it is a very rural area where we're talking about the greatest threat for severe weather. So let me know in the comments down below if you want a live stream for this. I'll consider it. We'll see what happens with the evolution of storms today. The reason why it's interesting is because we're watching for damaging winds and hail, which is pretty ordinary stuff. We do have a hatched area for hail, by the way, which is where we're going to be watching for hail that could be up to the size of the size of baseballs the tornado risk is what could be interesting if we do see a tornado today it could be very photogenic which is what we're gonna be watching for later today we could even get an isolated strong tornado it's not something that can be ruled out today even though it's a very low chance it is something that's possible if we do get a discrete supercell and that's a big if it's not a, a certainty it's a very conditional risk but that's what we're gonna be watching for today i will consider a live stream but i would say it's a very low chance as the area where we would see a tornado would more than likely just be out in a field so if it's, it's something that's impacting people we'll definitely consider a live stream but other than that i think the live stream chances are very low for today now as we go into tossing trampolines on tall trees thursday we do have yet again another slight risk for severe weather in minnesota wisconsin and iowa we also have a marginal threat that goes back down into kansas where the main concern for tomorrow will be mostly damaging winds and hail but we will have a potential for a couple of tornadoes back in parts of that slight risk which i'll show you in just a second we also have a marginal threat of severe weather in the mid-Atlantic for Virginia and North Carolina where some sporadic hail and wind will be possible and we'll talk more about Friday in a few minutes but I do want to mention Friday's risk will be predominantly back over in the Ohio Valley and as well as the Great Lakes region where another risk for some hail wind and maybe another isolated tornado threat will exist. On Thursday there is a relatively large area for this 2% tornado risk that we have it goes anywhere from Minnesota back into Iowa and also through Wisconsin I would say the greatest threat will probably probably be in this area here that I've outlined. So back over in eastern Minnesota and western Wisconsin. If we do go live again this week, it will more than likely be for tomorrow. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified if and when we do go live. Now, the tornado threat for today in the northern plains will be pretty interesting depending on where you are. Now the threat is actually interesting. If we do get discrete supercells, I do think a photogenic tornado or two will definitely be a possibility in parts of southern North Dakota 
and parts of northern South Dakota. I know that sounds kind of weird, but the area that I've circled is where that greatest potential would be right around about probably about four o'clock to about eight o'clock tonight. It's not a really large window, but anytime between then, we very easily could see a tornado or two. Now, the main concern again for today will be damaging winds and hail, but I wouldn't even rule out a strong tornado if we do get one. Another reason why is because the hodographs are actually really crazy today. We haven't seen hodographs this curved in quite a while. This gives you an idea of the spin in the atmosphere. So we're looking at the winds from the surface all the way up into the upper atmosphere, into the troposphere, for example. And so you can see these curves here. Those are indicating pretty nice curved hodographs, leading to basically believe that we could see a tornado or two today if any storms are able to stay discreet. I think if we did get one, the best chance for something like that would be in northern South Dakota. But we also could see that happen in southern North Dakota. So a couple areas really in particular to watch for. Unfortunately, you know, in one of these situations where we could see a strong tornado, the good news is that it's very rural areas of both North and South Dakota. So hopefully if we do see a tornado today, it's in the middle of nowhere and it's just like, you know, in a field or something like that. That's the hope. Now here's what we're looking at for the future radar for today. It's not all bad news because right now the latest computer model is still showing storms firing up right around four to five o'clock with mostly a wind and hail threat initially. Storms are expected to cluster together very quickly, which means that the tornado threat would be definitely a little bit lower. If we have anything discrete, that is where we're watching for the greatest tornado threat. So on the southern side of this line or with the discrete supercell, that is where the tornado threat would be the greatest. But most models have this going right into a line of thunderstorms as we go into the late afternoon and early evening. And then it kind of falls apart as we go into the overnight hours. With that said, we could see a tornado really anywhere in this area. And that would be predominantly uh, during the late afternoon and early evening. I wouldn't expect really much of a tornado threat though after about nine or 10 o'clock. Now back over in the mid-Atlantic region for today and as well as the Northeast, the tornado threat is pretty much zero. Uh, again, I wouldn't rule out a brief spin up maybe in Pennsylvania, but again, that's just nothing concerning really in my opinion for today. Here's what we're looking at for the future radar today. So storms will continue in Indiana and Illinois throughout the afternoon. Some storms will try to fire off this evening or really late afternoon into the early evening across Pennsylvania, back into West Virginia, Ohio, and Indiana. The majority of these storms will be isolated to widely scattered. Uh, again, maybe some spotty hail or wind will be possible, but nothing really too crazy. And then as we go into Thursday, another initiation of storms will be possible anywhere from New York back into parts of Virginia. Another threat for just ordinary damaging winds and hail. Don't really expect much of a tornado threat on Thursday. For the Midwest, Wednesday is going to be very quiet for the most part, unless you're in southern Illinois or southern Indiana. Uh, really, for the most part, not really expecting much of a tornado threat. Once we go into Thursday, there will definitely be at least a low tornado risk, and I think the best chance for that will be in central and eastern Minnesota on Thursday, which is, by the way, tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday, so make sure that you're hatching down your trampolines. Hashtag trampoline awareness across the United States. This is what we're looking at, though, for the tornado threat. Overall, it's going to be pretty much across Iowa and Minnesota and western Wisconsin, predominantly during the mid to late afternoon and early evening. It's going to be a relatively isolated tornado threat, but definitely going to be something to watch for, as it is going to be a day that we're going to have a lot of storms out there across these areas. So for today, again, spotty storms in Illinois and Indiana. As we go into Thursday, we're going to be watching for storms to fire up during the mid-afternoon hours, so around 2 to 4 o'clock. These are going to be predominantly just, you know, semi-discrete to linear storms, so the tornado threat in general should stay low if this setup does continue to hold as forecasted, but I do think we'll have at least the damaging wind potential across Minnesota. Any storms that can stay semi-discrete back up in Minnesota will have an elevated chance at being tornadic, and then as we go closer to 6 to 7 o'clock, these storms will move into Wisconsin, across Iowa, back into Nebraska and Kansas. This will eventually move into the Midwest, including areas like Illinois and Wisconsin by like the late evening and into the overnight hours. But I think overall, the storms are going to fall apart and they probably will not be severe by the time they get there. Here's what we're looking at in the Central Plains for tomorrow. Storms will be firing up during the mid to late afternoon. Again, damaging winds and hail being the main concern. And then these will start to just kind of move east and most likely fall apart as we get past sunset on Thursday. If anything changes, with the forecast, we'll obviously post an update here tomorrow with another video. Now, beyond Wednesday and Thursday, as we go into Flying Fences Friday, we should have another risk for severe weather with the same exact storm. It should be predominantly just a isolated to widely scattered severe weather event or instability access anywhere from Michigan back into Missouri, where there will be a potential again for damaging winds, hail, and maybe another isolated tornado threat. And then by Saturday, we could see some more severe weather in the mid-Atlantic, but overall, the threat right now does does remain on the lower side even for Saturday. Here's what we're looking at for the next few days. As we go into Friday, showers and thunderstorms will initiate across 
Michigan, back even into parts of Missouri where more damaging winds hail, and again, an isolated tornado threat will exist. By Saturday, the severe weather threat will start to kind of dwindle more, but it will still exist in the mid-Atlantic on Saturday. And then as we go into Sunday, things are really starting to quiet down for most of the lower 48. The one area that will be pretty active, though, will be the southern plains. Areas like Texas and Oklahoma are in for a treat with plenty of rain as we go into the weekend and as well as into next week. High pressure will build in the northeast as we go into the middle of next week. That'll keep things dry up there. Our next legitimate shot for any sort of severe weather again in the northern plains or the Midwest or the Ohio Valley after Friday will probably be the very end of next week. So nothing really too concerning as of right now unless we get some sort of small mesoscale features. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're not already.